Okay, hello, thank you for coming everyone. I am from UCLA and I'm gonna talk to you about this package that I've been working on for about a year, okay? So before I do that, I wanna introduce Open Mendel. This is the research team that I'm part of. We are all in UCLA and we do research in statistics and genetics, okay? You can check us out at this homepage. Currently we have these packages and they're all written in Julia. So um, <clears throat> we're very open to collaborative research and um, we, we also don't wanna duplicate any effort that people has done. So <clears throat> just reach out to us, I'm sure we will, we will respond to you, okay? So <clears throat> let's begin by introducing the problem that I wanna solve. So this is the problem that my package solves, okay? It's generalized linear model regression. So in this set setup, you have one of these vectors. This is a response vector. It can have any distributions, right? It can be continuous or count data or binary, that kind of stuff. And associated with it, it has a design matrix. And this design matrix is, is what we call high dimensional, okay? Um, what it means is it has more columns than the number of rows. So it's called overdetermined in statistics. And um, the assumption here is that even though there is a ton of columns, only a few of them are actually affecting the response. So that's what we mean by we wanna estimate a sparse statistical model, beta, okay? So is, is this clear, right? So you're given y, you're given x, and this nonlinear function g such that you wanna find a sparse beta such that y is equal to x, y is equal to x beta apply to this um, function, okay? And um, before I move on to my package, I just wanna convince you that this is actually a pretty general problem, okay? Um, if you wanna do some kind of regressions, this is, you can probably make it fit into this framework. And um, these are just some examples. So we are trying to endorse this new method. It's called iterative hard thresholding. It came from compressed sensing about like um, 10 years ago. So, um, but this, this is a general problem that we're solving, okay? So naturally there is a lot of a lot of uh, different methods that solve it. So in statistics, people like to do like lasso, elastic net, and, um, but we're from, we're doing genetic study, right? And in genetics, people, people like to do these things called the marginal test. And what they are, are they're just like a bunch of, like a consecutive number of univariate linear regressions. And they, they have a, several variants, but um, I'm right here in this table, I'm just trying to convince you that IHT is indeed better than both of these methods. For lasso, there's just um, way too many false positives. We can't really deal with that in genetics because these testings are expensive. And for these univariate testings, there are, the, the true positive rate is just not high enough, okay? So I'm going all over a lot of details. Um, just if, if, you, if you have questions, we can come back to it. So that's fine, right? And I wanna show you how to use my package now. So in this case, we are considering a logistic regression, but I mean, in, in, this, in this slide, we, we have several distributions to choose from. So in this case, um, your Y is binary count data, right? Zero or ones. And I'm just gonna simulate for each of these a, a design matrix. It's 1,000 by 10,000, so these are really small problems. It's just for an example. Um, and even though there's 10,000 covariates, um, it's also called features. Um, I am only gonna say that 10 of them are actually affecting the response and everything else is sort of just white noise. And um, if you simulate data, all you have, to, in order to just use our package, you, this is just like a one line solution, okay? It's just one function, it will run iterative hard thresholding and give you the result. So this would be some expected output um, in, you know, on a 10,000 by, 1,000 by 10,000 matrix, it's, this is the runtime and iteration numbers and um, so this code is reproducible online, okay? Um, it's on my GitHub, the talk is as well. But this is only one run, okay? And if you do it many, many times, like maybe a thousand times, eventually you can, you can, you can, you will see that the parameter estimates from, from, from IHT is going to be unbiased if, if you actually find the corresponding um, variables. And that is essentially why it's better than Lasso, right? So, <laughs> This is just one example, and in fact, I wanna point out one thing, is that in this case, we are assuming that k is equal to 10, and we are assuming that we know that, okay? Um, in practice, we actually don't know, right? So if in practice, you're just given some design matrix x right here, and you wanna like fit a regression model, you don't know how many 
true number of variables are affecting the response, right? And um, our package handles that by cross-validation. It works very, very well, and um, I don't have time to go over it. You can see the details in our paper, okay? So this is good, right? But remember, like, I just, this, I just showed you this worked for single and double precision um, folding point matrices. But remember, like, I am from Open Mendel, right? And we do statistical genetics. And or more broadly, if we do bioinformatics, and bioinformatics has a has a has I mean like it's it's called like a big big data problem. It's not like exabyte or anything, right? But it's still like pretty big for us to deal with. So we designed this package in particular for genetics data and for gen genome-wide association studies, GWAS data in particular. And what that means is the design matrix X is your DNA sequence, okay? So or like a subset of it. So essentially, we are trying to predict things like do you have cancer or not based on based on just DNA, and um, it's an interesting problem, right? But because your DNA, you know, there's a lot of DNA, you can collect a ton of people. Um, these design matrices, just like the matrix itself, can get really big, right? And the biggest one can be like several dozens of terabytes, and um, there's just no way for for us to deal with that. Maybe somebody, some of you can. Um, <laughs> But the next level of problems, so the, the interesting ones, right, the ones that, that are, would be about 400 gigabytes, you know, maybe 800, something like that. And those are really the kind of problems that we will be interested in solving. And of course, if you, slow, if you store this kind of matrix in a double precision matrix, it's never gonna, at least for our applications, it's not gonna work because you, you would be hard pressed to find some sort of computing nodes that has 400 gigabytes, okay, even if, even if it's like a cluster of cloud computing, right? So this is a problem, and we are proposing a solution which uses a package called Snip Arrays. It's also part of the Open Mendel umbrella. It's written by Hua Zhou, um, if you know. He's, he's really good, okay, you can look him up. But what this package does is, instead of loading the genotype matrix, because this is a genotype matrix, right, GWAS, and in GWAS, you, you know, you can, you can actually store your genetic information as, as like zero, ones, or twos, okay? So internally, you can actually, you can compress them into bit arrays, and if you do that, you can achieve a pretty good compression ratio. So here I'm just gonna benchmark the linear algebra done by SNP arrays, compared to just BLAS, right? And just keep in mind that BLAS is a very, it's very highly parallel, it's basically the most optimized library um, we have, I think. And uh, SNP arrays is, um, it's doing bit level multiplication, so it's single threaded internally, right? It's just using the default Julia's multiplication, general matmol, and it's single threaded. But even though it's single threaded, it's, um, you can see that as the data sets gets big, these, multi these the speed gains is actually um, pretty, quite remarkable, right? And if the matrix is small, it's like 10 times slower. But if the, the data gets bigger, it's, it gets faster and faster. And the only reason for that is because of the memory requirement, right? It doesn't have to do these, these very expensive data swapping with the hard disk. It's, you can just load the whole thing into RAM. And I think you can imagine this. So all of this benchmark is done on my computer right here. So. You can imagine that if we try this on like a 400 gigabyte data, it's gonna just be really, really bad, right? And um, so I just wanna emphasize that this is really kind of the point where our package is useful, right? If you wanna do regressions, you can use our package and it will probably work better than Lasso, but um, if you wanna do GWAS, then we can really like do it better because of this data compression that we can do. Oh, sorry, so there's a conclusion. So it's, so like I said, if you wanna try to do lasso or elastic net or marginal test, right, in biology, um, maybe you can consider trying our, our package, okay? And um, yeah, thank you. So in the interest of time, we should just move on to the next speaker, okay?